To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education. So my dear children, within this chapter, we'll be mainly focusing about the muscles, bones and about the joints. So in the earlier chapter, we discussed about uh, several appendages with that are helpful that are helpful for the locomotion process, right? So like I said, within this chapter, my dear children, we will be mainly focusing about how does the locomotive process or what special appendages that helps for the locomotion of animals. Especially, we are mainly focusing about the locomotive structures or the movement structures that can be observed within a human being, right, within a human being. So let's head on to see what are the things given under this topic. Invertebrates use muscles while vertebrates use both muscles and bones for their movements. So at the last part of the previous chapter, I told you that most of the invertebrates, not most actually, all the invertebrates, right? All the invertebrates, they use muscle movements for the locomotion, right? They use muscle movements for the locomotion. But however, when you take a crowdate, means a vertebrate, vertebrate is going to use muscles and as well as bones for the locomotion process. Even when they are showing movements, my dear children, right? Now, if you take the movement of my hand, movement of my hand mainly happening because of the uh, movements related to bones and as well as the movements related to muscles. Both of these structures helpful for the locomotion or for the movement of different structures within the body. Okay, so all of these movements are mainly mainly going to occur because of the action of bones and as well as the muscles. So for the invertebrates, only muscles are helpful, but for a vertebrate, muscles and bones both are helpful for the locomotion process and for the movements as well. Then, bones and muscles help not only for movements, but all also to maintain the body shape and the rigidity or the support. So you know that. Let's imagine that we have only muscles. We don't have a skeletal system. In that case, my dear children, we won't be able to stand like this. Definitely our legs will bend down and we will like we will fall down to the uh, ground. Okay, we will fall down to the ground. So it mainly occurs because our legs are not that much sufficient to provide a rigidity if we have only muscles, right? If there are only muscles th that are located within our legs, then muscles will not be able to provide that much of a rigidity, right? So definitely we will fall down to the ground. But however, my dear children, Organisms, especially vertebrates, they have these skeletal systems. So the skeletal system is somewhat rigid, right? Not actually, not somewhat rigid. They, they are like strong, much stronger than the muscles, much stronger than the muscles. So therefore, these skeletal systems or else bones, also helps to keep our body rigid, right? It helps to act against the gravitational force and keep our body erect and rigid, okay? So not only for the locomotion, but also to keep our body rigid and erect, these bones are very helpful. If there are no bones, then because of the gravity, we will fall down to the ground 
and we won't be able to stand up like this, right? So bones are very helpful for the movements and as well as for the uh, for the uh, for the support of the body and for the uh, and for keep our body erect and rigid. Okay, so within these two figures, you can observe the skeletal system and as as well as the muscular system of the human beings. So muscular system reflects about the muscles that we have, the main muscles that we have in our body. So these are the muscles that can be observed within the body, my dear children. Then here within the skeletal system, the bones can be observed. Main types of bones can be observed. Okay. So the muscles and bones both are helpful for the movements that occur within the human beings. Okay, for the movements that occur within the human beings. All of these two structures are very important. All of these two important, uh, all of these two systems are very important, my dear children. Okay, right. So, now by looking at this figure, you won't be able to get a sound idea about the bone, uh, bone system or else a skeletal, a skeletal system and as well as the muscular system now. So let's head on to observe a 3D animated diagram of our skeletal system and as well as the muscular system my dear children. By that way you can get a more sound idea about how does the bones and muscles are located within our body. So let's head on to observe our muscle system or the muscular system and the skeletal system within the body of human beings. So my dear children, here now you can observe the muscular system of human beings. Muscular system of human beings. So if I'm going to zoom this thing in, you can observe the muscles, right? So as you can see here, it's very clear to us that, us that these muscles are like, they have arranged like, thread like structures okay I mean like they are like here you can observe when you zoom in you can clearly observe they are like thread they have they, they have a structure like a thread see so here when you observe the muscles see this particular muscle now right see it's like a thread See, it's like a thread. So if I'm going to select now, see, it's like a thread. It's going to, I mean like it's going to dilate like this. Okay, like a thread. See, so this entire muscle is made up with these small thread-like structures, thread-like muscles. So these muscles are referred as muscle fibers. These are specially referred as muscle fibers, my dear children, because they are like thread-like structures, right? Because they are like, they are thread-like structures, okay? They are not a, just like, you know, like a single particular cell, right? Normally, you know that animal cell has a spherical shape, but however, these are like spinal, these are like spinal or else these are like, somewhat lengthier than the other types of cells contained within our body. So normal body cells of an animal is somewhat spherical. But however, these muscle cells are uh, observed as fibers. I mean like they are somewhat lengthier, right, than the other ones. They have a spinal shape. So this is the muscular system of human beings my dear children so as you can see these are arranged as fibers like this right these are arranged as muscle fibers so these muscles are very helpful for the movement that occurs within the organism so if you check this muscle right if you check the muscle this muscle is the muscle that can be observed within the, right, 
that it is the muscle that can be observed within the so here this muscle it is the muscle that can be observed within the elbow joint now this is the elbow joint now so this special muscle is called as the biceps the bicep muscles right the bicep muscle and beneath the bicep muscle my dear children this muscles right these muscles so there are several muscles in here right these muscles are referred as see here you can observe this one these ones are referred as triceps tricep right tricep muscles tricep muscles so bicep muscles and the tricep muscles right tricep muscles bicep muscles and tricep muscles right so we'll be observing these things as well when we are discussing about the elbow joint further just for now these muscles are important bicep muscles and tricep muscles these are important for the locomotion or not for the locomotion actually for the movement in our hand okay so this is the elbow joint as you can see these muscles are somewhat spinal in shape and they are elongated cells right that's why it is referred as a fiber a muscle fiber so entire muscular system of the organism or the human being the entire muscular system of the human being my dear children is made up with these muscle fibers right muscle fibers even is in our leg also as you can see here within the leg also we can observe these muscle fibers so these things are spindle in shape and they are elongated that's why these things are referred as muscle fibers my dear children okay muscle fibers so this is the muscular system right this is the muscular system that can be observed within the body of human beings right muscular system now let's head on to observe the skeletal system my dear children right so let's head on to observe the skeletal system then right so my dear children now we are going to observe the skeletal system of the human beings bones or the skeletal system so this is the skeletal system of the human being right the skeletal system so when you zoom in right you can observe the different types of bones contained within the human being so this is the skull right the skull you know that the skull is the one which is going to provide the protection for the brain so skull is made up with bones a set of bones like this then my dear children for the protection of the spinal cord and for the interior body parts you know that there is a vertebral column a vertebral column so these are the bones that can be observed within the vertebral column right the bones that can be observed within the vertebral column then you can observe the thoracic cavity inside the right inside the ribs right so these are referred as the ribs so the in interior to uh, ribs you can observe the thoracic cavity so this thorax of the human body is made up with or it is covered by ribs so these things are referred as ribs my dear children ribs the rib cage okay so these things are the ribs as you can see there are several ribs around the thorax of the body of human right so this particular this particular area is called the sternum right the sternum okay so as you can see here so these are the bones that can be observed within the arms right the bones that can be observed within the arms right then uh, if you take the lower part of the arm you can observe there are two different bones so these are two different bones within the lower part of the arm and this is the upper part of the arm so this is called as the humerus and this is the ulna 
and this is the radius bone, the radius bone, right? We'll be discussing about these things when we are going to discuss about the elbow joint. Up to now, we are, go up now, just for now, I'm going to give you the main parts. That's it, okay? So this is referred as the, so this, uh, uh, this particular bone, the upper one is referred as the humerus. And I told you that our front side of the arm, this area from here to here, this area, the front side is made up with two different bones. This bone is referred as the ulna, right? This one is referred as the ulna, right? This is the ulna. And my dear children, the other bone, this one is referred as the radius bone, right? The radius bone. So our bone, so within our arm, there are three bones. This is the ulna, the radius bone, and the top one is the humerus. So this is our elbow joint. As you can see, this is the elbow joint, right? The figure shows the elbow joint. The structure or the figure shows the elbow joint in here. So all of these three bones can be observed right around the elbow joint. Ulna, radius bone and the humerus. All three bones can be observed within the elbow joint. So this is the elbow joint. Right? This is the elbow joint. This one. Right. So the legs, the bones in our legs, okay, then the bones in our hips, right? Then this is the, these are the fingers, bones in our fingers, my dear children. So as you can see, all the, and if you take the feet, right? So feet of the organism or feet of the human being, those things are also going to contain several bones, right? Feet, they also contain several bones like here, you can observe. Then you can observe the knee joint in here, the knee joint. So like in the arm, my dear children, there are several bones within the, around the knee joint as well, right? Right, so by looking at the figure, you can see that the entire body has several bones which helps in movement and as well as the, uh, as well as to keep our body rigid and erect. So this is the human skeletal system, my dear children, the skeletal system of the human beings, right? As you can see, this is the skeletal system of the human beings. So as we are vertebrates, these bones are going to provide a rigidity as well as it is going to help for the movements or for the motions and for the locomotions that occur within the body of organisms so or in our uh, within the human beings so human beings mainly do these movements and locomotion with the help of bones and muscles right so now we have identified several things related to the muscular system and as well as for the Skeletal system, my dear children. Now, once again, let's head on to the classroom and we'll study the further things related to the lesson. So, my dear children, like I said, so there are bones within the humans and as well as muscles within the human that helps for the movements and as well as for the locomotion. So, we have studied about the uh, skeletal system and, and we got a a good idea or else a simple idea actually we got a simple idea about the skeletal system and as well as the muscular system in our body right so now let's head on to observe the other things contained within the muscles and as well as the bones right so first of all you are given with features of muscles now we have studied about the muscles, right? I have even shown you several, uh, several types of muscles that can be observed within the muscular system of the human beings. 
Right, so within this part, we'll be actually mainly focusing about special features of a muscle. Special features contained within muscles. So you are given with a topic, features of muscles. Features of muscles. So like I said, when I was, uh, when I, when I was describing about the muscles, my dear children, by using that 3D diagram, I told you that these muscles are somewhat elongated, right? These are elongated cells. So therefore, these things are referred as fibers. So muscles within our body, these, th these things are arranged as fibers, my dear children. These muscles are arranged as fibers, fibers. So here it is given the first and foremost feature of a muscle is that the cells in the muscles are arranged as fibers. So this is a muscle cell. As you can see here, the muscle is fitted or it's been fixed to a bone and this is a muscle cell. So the muscle cell is like this. It has a thread-like structure and it is a fiber, a lengthier one, somewhat lengthier thread-like structure muscle cell. It has the ability, right, it has the ability, you know, like when you, when during the movements, right, as you can see here, if it is, if it is having a thread-like structure, then we should have the ability to reduce the length of it. You know, we should have the ability to shorten the length. And also, there is a somewhat possibility to increase the length, right? Increasing in the sense that we are not going to increase dramatically here, but at least by few centimeters, few millimeters, we can increase the length. We can contract it, okay? So the speciality here is that these muscles, as they are arranged as fibers, they have the contraction and relaxation ability because they are elongated, because they are elongated cells. Because they are elongated cells, they have the ability to contract or else to relax, right? So this fibrous nature gives the muscles an ability to contract or else relax, okay? So here it is given the second point, my dear children. Muscle cell has the ability to contract or shorten. So like I said, muscle cell has the ability to contract or else to short the length. Okay, or to shorten. Then, muscle cell has the ability to relax. It has the ability to relax as well. Contraction and relaxation both can be observed within these muscle fibers. As they have arranged as fibers, right, they have the ability to relax and as well as to contract, okay? Then the next point. When muscles are relaxed or contracted, they have the ability to reach the original position again. Ah, now there is an original position. No. So when a muscle is contracted or else when a muscle is relaxed, the muscles also have the ability to reach the original position once again. Okay, means that they can increase the length. They can, if, if they want, they can decrease the length. And also, when needed, they can reach to the original position without changing the length also. So all of these three can be observed within the muscle fibers, my dear children. So as these muscles are arranged as fibers, these special properties can be observed within the muscles. So muscles have these specific properties, my dear children. Right? Muscles have these specific properties. What are those? These muscles are arranged as fibers. Muscles has the ability, muscles, 
muscle has the ability to contract and as well as relax. So when these muscles are contracted or relaxed, they have the ability to reach the original position once again. Okay. So these are the key points that we can observe within the muscles of human beings, not even the not in uh, human beings also, but also in other animals, we can observe the same properties within the muscles. Okay. So these are the special key points or key properties that we can identify within the muscles, my dear children, right? Muscles. Right then. So studying how the muscles help to move a bone. And you know that our skeletal system, our skeletal system has bones, no? So for the movements, my dear children, muscles and bones both are important. So by doing a simple activity, we are going to discuss how does the movement of muscles is going to occur? How does the movement of muscles is going to occur, right? And how does the movement of bones are going to occur with the movement of those muscles? So with by doing this simpler activity, we'll be studying how muscles help to move a bone. How muscles are going to help to move a bone by doing this simpler activity. Okay, so when doing this activity, we'll be needing these materials, my dear children, right? So let's see what are the materials. So first of all, you'll be needing wood planks. Or else you can take plastic sheets. If you want, you can take plastic sheets. If you can find some plastic sheets, then plastic sheets are also probable for this activity, right? Plastic sheets. So wood planks or else several plastic sheets. Actually, actually by doing with the plastic sheets, the activity would be somewhat more easier to do, okay? Activity will be somewhat easier to do, but if you can find several plastic sheets rather than the wooden ones. Then the next one, you'll be needing several nuts and bolts. Right, nuts and bolts. Then if you are using wood planks, definitely you will be needing a saw to cut these things. Okay, however, either you have to use a hacksaw blade in order to cut plastic sheets or else a saw in order to cut the wooden planks. Okay, then you'll be needing a forcep. Right, forcep, you know, in order to tie these nuts and balls, right, a forcep. Then, elastic, right, then we'll be needing elastic. We'll be needing two elastic, not actually one. We'll be needing two elastic. Right, two elastic bands. We'll be needing two elastic bands, right, when doing this activity. So these are the materials you need, my dear children. Okay, right, my dear children. So these are the materials you want. Okay, so you'll be needing wood planks or else plastic sheets, several nuts and bolts, a hand saw, right, then a forcep and two elastic bands, right? Now let's head on to see the method of doing this thing, you no, know, this particular activity, right? So as you can see here, this is the figure, this is the instrument or this is the apparatus that you need to, uh, that you need to build, okay? So I'll name the parts given here, my dear children, right? So that you can get a good idea. So I'll name the part, this is the first part so like i said you'll be needing two plastic sheets or two plastic uh, two wooden planks so this is the 
wooden plank. I'll name this thing as A. Okay. Then this is now I told you we need to take two plastic bands, two elastic band bands. No, we need to take two elastic bands. So from those two elastic band, this is a one particular elastic band. So I'll name this thing as elastic A. Right. Then we'll be needing this nut and bolt. So this is the nut. This is that nut. So we need to fix this thing. I mean, we need to fix these two wooden planks together. So we'll need, we'll be needing that nut. Then this is the elastic D, the second elastic. Elastic B, right? The second elastic. Then, my dear children, this is the second wooden plank, right? The wooden plank B. The wooden plank B. Wooden plank B, right? So these are the ones that you need. Okay, these are the ones that you need. So we'll be needing wooden plank, two wooden planks, and we need to fix the two wooden planks like this. Then when fixing, you can use the nut in order to hold the wooden planks together. Then my dear children, you have to fix the two elastic bands like this, right? So now this is the apparatus that we need to prepare from those instruments. So here it is given, prepare a model of an elbow unit by using hard cardboard pieces or wooden planks as shown in the figure or else you can use instead of wooden planks or cardboard sheets, you can use plastic sheets, okay, right. Then contract the elastic band A without moving the wooden plank P. Contract B without moving P. So what you have to do, contract the elastic band A. So this is elastic band A, you need to contract it without moving the wooden plank P. So this wooden plank in here, so here it is given that my dear children contract the elastic band A without moving the wooden plank P. So this is, this wooden plank B instead of, instead of B, I'll use the P, okay? Here I'll use P as it is given as P, okay? So this is wooden plank T. Ah, right. So what you have to do, you have to contract elastic A without moving this wooden plank or wooden, pa wooden plank P. So you have to contract this. You have to contract elastic A without moving the wooden plank P. Then observe what's going to happen, right? Observe what's going to happen. Then contract B without moving P. Then what you have to do? Then you have to contract the second elastic without moving P. First you have to contract the A elastic. Then you have to contract B elastic. Then you have to observe what's going to happen 
within the arm or within the second wooden plank or wooden plank A. Okay. When contracting this first elastic, what, what will happen to A? Okay. Or the A wooden plank. When contracting the second elastic, what will happen to A? You have to observe these things. Okay. So this is the way of doing the activity, my dear children. Right. Now let's head on to the laboratory. I have a system with me or I have prepared an apparatus like this by using several plastic stripes. Okay. And several elastic bands, my dear children. So let's head on to the laboratory and we'll contract these two elastic bands and let's see what will happen to the wooden plank A when I'm going to contract elastic A and when I'm going to contact, contract elastic B separately. Okay, so let's head on to the laboratory and we'll observe what is going to happen within the system when contracting these el elastic bands. Right, my dear children, now this is the system which I have prepared by using two elastic bands and two plastic stripes. Instead of wooden stripes, I have used plastic over here. Right? So, now, as you can see here, when I'm going to contract one of these, right, like this. So, this is the contraction. The other is going to stretch. Then when I'm going to contract the elastic over here, the other one, the other elastic is going to stretch. So it's very clear to us that this mechanic mechanism works upon the contraction and the stretch stretching part because of the contractions and the stretch. So during the contractions and during the stretchings, the arm of the instrument which I have prepared over here is going to move up and down like this. So here now this one is contracted but however this is stretched. Now this one is contracted however this is being stretched. So this is the one which is identical to the motion of our arm. The motion of our arm also occur according to this mechanism. There are muscle fibers which is going to help like the elastic bands over here. So this is the elbow joint. So this is how we can move our arm here and there, up and down. So likewise, my dear children, when I'm going to move one like this here, you can see that this is being contracted and the other is being stretched. When I'm doing like this, this elastic is contracted. However, the other is being stretched like the arm. So this is how the movement of our arm is going to work. Same as the elastic bands which are moving or which is contracting and stretching like in the instrument. So these are the two arm parts. This is the elbow joint and these are the muscle fibers. Right. Okay. So let's head on to the classroom once again and we'll study about the muscle fibers and we'll write down our observation and conclusions from the activity also. Right, my dear children. So when I was contracting those, when I was contracting those two elastic bands, you can clearly observe not the P arm, but the A arm is going to move up and down simply it's going to bend and it's going to stretch. Okay. So let me draw you a figure once more to explain more about the process.
right so i'll use the elastic bands like this the red color one and a black color one okay like this then the nut and the bolt over here right so we named this one as a and this is also a a elastic right so this is a elastic the red color one is the b elastic this is the b elastic and this is the wooden plank p this is wooden plank a now when contracting a a bends up right a is going to bend up we this we observed that thing when i am going to contract a elastic the arm or the wooden plank a bends up so the first observation my dear children we'll write the first observation when contracting when contracting when contracting elastic a a arm or else we can say that a wooden plank in simple we'll write that thing as arm a okay when contracting elastic a arm a arm a bends up bends up so when contracting this thing this thing bends up okay then the second observation right the second observation i'll use a different color pen to write down the second observation number 2 over here when when contracting when contracting elastic b now when contracting elastic b my dear children arm a stretched down right arm a arm a moves down right so here we can observe that when i am going to contract elastic a this a arm is going to move up or it's going to bend up right so when contracting elastic a when contracting elastic a arm a bends up arm a bends up then my dear children when contracting elastic b when contracting elastic b the second elastic the arm a moves down so it's going to move down right it's going to stretch right actually it's not going to stretch i mean here stretching means it's going to move down once again right it's going to move down once again okay right so this is what this is going to have this is what is going to happen within the apparatus that we have prepared by using the elastics and by using two different planks okay right 
So my dear children, how can we relate this thing to the motion of our elbow joint? So our arm is like this. This is our normal arm or the hand. So I can keep my hand like this, right? So this is my hand. Between the elbow joint, between the elbow joint, like in elastic A, there is a muscle. So when I am contracting this muscle like this, when I am going to contract, now this is the muscle, right? This is the muscle that I have in between the two arms, right? Like this. So when I am contracting it, as you can see that now it's it earlier it was like this. Now when now when I am going to uh, when I am going to bend my hand, it's like this. The muscle is like this. So this is the normal muscle. Now when I am going to contract, the arm bends up, and you can see that the muscle is getting contracted. Right, muscle is getting contracted like this. So these muscles are, right, these muscles, these elastic A, elastic A is going to represent that particular muscle between here, between the elbow joint. Okay. So when contracting this elastic A, the arm may bends up. It is identical to the movement that occurs in our hand. If I want to bend the arm like this, the muscle located within the elbow joint over here will help me. Then if I want to stretch an arm, stretch my arm like this, the other muscle which is located over here, like in here, this place, it is going to help. Now it's going to contract like this. See? Like this. This is the bend one. Now it's going to contract like this. So upon contracting, my arm is going to stretch. So when contracting B elastic, this arm is going to stretch down or it's going to move down. So this movement is very identical to the movement of our hand, right? It's identical to the movement in our hand. The same process is going to occur. Same process is going to occur, my dear children, okay, right? So this is how the motion or the movements occur within the arm of our body or the hand in our body by the elbow joint or in the elbow joint okay right my dear children so this model indicates the motion or the movement that occurs within our hand or that occurs in our hand so this movement is identical right the movement of this model is identical to the movement of our hand okay right now let's head on to observe how does the real elbow joint is going to move our hand, okay? So within next figure, you are given with the elbow joint. So this is the elbow joint, my dear children, right? So like I said, when I was discussing about the skeletal system, I told you that there are several bones within the elbow joint or around the elbow joint. So here at the top area of your forearm, you can observe the radius bone. The top part of the forearm, you can observe the radius bone. Below the radius bone, you can observe the ulna. Then there are tendons which joins the humerus. So third one is the humerus, my dear children. This is the bone which is located at the topmost part of your elbow joint, like in this area, right? 
okay this is the forearm this is the back arm okay so this is the, within the back arm or the starting position of the arm you can observe the humerus humerus so this is the humerus bone so we can observe three bones at the topmost part the humerus bone then within the forearm there are two bones at the top you can observe the radius bone and below it you can observe the ulna and these tendons they are connected with right these tendons are connected with the humerus and the radius bone tendons the special special muscle that connects to humerus right and to the radius bone this is referred as the bicep muscle so bicep muscle connected to the radius bone it is connected to the radius bone as you can see here then the next muscle the other muscle so it is called as the trimerus so it is connected with the humerus and the ulna over here okay ulna over here so when you are going to contract the bicep muscle when contracting this bicep muscle my dear children right when contracting bicep muscle hand comes up like this or oh, it's going to bend up when contracting the tricep muscle the hand is going to bend down or hand is going to stretch like this so like i said in the earlier case the two elastic bands are helping to move these arms here and there in the same way my dear children within the hand of humans these bicep muscles and tricep muscles helps to move these bones up and down like this so these muscles bicep and tricep muscles contracts to move the bones up and down so by that way my dear children our entire arm or our entire hand is going to bend up and down like this so when i am when i am stretching my hand and when i am bending my hand like this right the bicep and tricep muscles bicep muscles and tricep muscles these muscles helps to bend my arm here and there like this okay so here it is given when bicep muscle is contracted when the bicep is getting contracted hand bends and lifts up so hand is going to bend and lift up when i'm going to move or when i'm going to contract the bicep muscle so i'm going to ask you a simple question how does this contraction is going to occur what is the procedure who is the one who is who is the one which is giving the command actually you are the one who is going to give the command your brain is the one who is going to give the command this is my arm like this now i'm now i want to bend my arm so if so i'm bending arm my i'm bending my arm like this so the information now you are thinking no you are the one who is going to do that impulse so that thinking process so that impulse is given to the brain then brain is going to give that impulse to particular muscle to contract by that way it's going to contract so these bicep and tricep muscles my dear children you are the ones who are controlling it right by your own you can control the contraction of tricep muscles and the bicep muscles okay you're the one who can control it you're the one who ones who are controlling the movements so bicep and tricep muscles behaves according to your command right then so when bicep muscle is contracted hand bends and lifts up 
and is going to bend and it's going to lift up. Then the next one, when tricep muscle is contracted, hand is stretched. Then the bicep muscles comes to its original resting position, right? So this is how the working process or this is how the process of movement in our elbow joint is going to work, my dear children. So as we can see here, the main things which is going to help for the movement of bones is our muscles. Especially within our elbow, my dear children, bicep muscles and tricep muscles helps for the motion. Okay, bicep and tricep muscles helps for the motion. Right then. So let's head on to see what are the other things given. Right. So as you can see here, now the apparatus that we have prepared earlier, this is that apparatus. And here, this is the elbow joint. So both the figures are now you uh, given here within this diagram, my dear children. Okay. So like I said, elastic band A represents the bicep muscle in the elbow joint. Ah, now this model, the elastic band A, elastic band A is going to represent the bicep muscle. So here it is given, when bicep muscle is contracted, the hands bends and lifts up. So like I said in the earlier, when this elastic A is going to contract, same as the contraction of, right? Same as the contraction of bicep muscle, right? Same as the contraction of bicep muscle. What will happen? This arm A comes up and also my dear children, our hand also comes up or our hand bends up or lifts up, okay? Then, Elastic B represents the tricep muscles. So this one is going to represent the tricep muscle. Tricep muscle. So when contracting the tricep muscle, right? So when tri tricep muscle is contracted, the hand is stretched. Our hand is going to stretch like this. Then the bicep muscle come to its original resting position, right? Bicep muscle comes to original resting position. So my dear children, when you are contracting the elastic B, this A arm or the Q wooden plank it is going to stretch down. Then in the same way, when contracting the tricep muscle over here, our arm stretch down like this. So like I said, the apparatus that we prepared is identical to the movements which occur within the elbow joint, my dear children, right? So these things, these apparatus or these elastic bands and the two arms represents, okay, represents the bones and the muscles that are located within the elbow joint, right then. This is the simpler 2D structure now. Now it's time to observe a three-dimensional structure of the elbow joint, my dear children. Okay. So let's head on to observe that three-dimensional figure of the elbow joint. And let's observe the tricep and bicep muscles and also the other contents within the elbow joint. So let's head on to observe that 3D structure there. Right, my dear children. So this is the structure, the 3D structure of our elbow joint. So as you can see here, within the structure, right, it's given. So this is this bone. This is the humerus, my dear children. So, so this is the humerus. And in front of the humerus, you can observe this particular one, this particular muscle which connects the, see, this is the 
radius bone and the humerus. So those two are connected to the this particular muscle. This muscle is referred as the bicep muscle. So there are two muscles in the bicep muscle, right? So bicep muscles, bicep muscles, see bicep muscles. Then after that you can observe over here the tricep muscles right so these are the tricep muscles right the tricep muscles tricep muscles right so bicep muscles and tricep muscles as you can see here it's clear to us that this bicep muscle is going to connect with this particular bone which is referred as the radius bone. See, it's connect with the radius bone. Observe. Bicep muscle. Right? So, this is the radius bone. So, the bicep muscle is connecting with the radius bone. Then, my dear children, See how it is connecting with the radius bone. How the bicep muscle is going to connect with the radius bone. See. Then my dear children, if you go for the back end of the arm, see. And now you can observe the tricep muscle. So this is the tricep muscle. The tricep muscle. So the tricep muscle is connected with this one, this particular bone, which is referred as the ulna, right? So this is the tricep, the tricep muscle. So there are three muscles in the tricep muscle. So it's connected with the ulna. So when contracting the tricep muscle, when contracting the tricep muscle, the hand is going to stretch. When contracting this bicep muscle, my dear children, when contracting the bicep muscle, hand is going to bend up. So this is the structure of bicep and the tricep muscle, my dear children, which is located within the elbow joint. So I hope that you got a good knowledge about the structure. Right, my dear children. Now let's head on to the classroom once again and we'll observe the other things. So my dear children, as you can see, when looking at the 3D figure, we can clear, we can get a clear observation that our bones are, our bo movement of our bones are directly related with the movements of our muscles. So you can clearly observe that the uh, bones in our hand is connected with the bicep and tricep muscles. Then by that way, by the contraction of bicep and tricep muscles, the movement of the hand is going to occur, right? So my dear children, within this lesson part, we discuss several things regarding the elbow joint of the human beings. Especially we focused about the lesson part, how does the movements or the motions going to occur within a crowdate or vertebrates. So remember, when you take a crowdate or else a vertebrate, for the motion or for the movements that occur within the crowdates, mainly joints muscles, bones are very helpful, okay? Not for the uh, movements, but also when to keep our body or to keep the bodies of the organisms erect and rigid. These things are pretty much important, especially bones and muscles, okay? Right then, so within our next chapter, my dear children, we'll be discussing about the movements related to the plants. So from this onwards, I'm going to wind up the second chapter, my dear children. So in our third chapter, we'll discuss about the movements related to the plants. To watch these important lessons, subscribe to DP Education's YouTube channel right now. Click on the bell icon to stay updated on the latest lessons. Sri Lanka's largest free online school, DP Education.